I have the weirdest job in the world. This video is sponsored by Anycubic. Start your 3D printing journey with the link in the description. I'm gonna show and tell you guys how I made one of the weirdest, coolest, most awesome props and art projects I've ever made. To cut a long story short, when I was a kid, I used to love something called Warhammer 40K. My favorite part of the hobby is what's called converting, where you take what you buy in the box and stuff around with it and make it different and unique. I got back into this hobby as an adult only a couple of years ago, and one of the things I wanted to do was create my own custom converted army. After a very long and tedious and iterative design process, which I covered over on Tabletop Time with the link in the card, so you can go check that out, I came up with the Space Bears, collaborating with Puppets War to create custom bits consisting of shoulder pads, helmets, chains, shields, and claws. You can go check that out, link to the product page for the bear bits is in the description. But it got me thinking, the funny thing about 3D files is you can change the size. So what's to stop me then from taking that claw bit and making it life size? Nothing is to stop me from doing that. So that's what I'm doing. Starting off with the prototype. All right, oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I love it when the supports come off clean. This is gonna be a little awkward because uh, that's the hollow bit, except it's not. Uh-oh. Ah, uh. oh, no! My finger fell off! It's the claw. It's coming for you. It's the claw. Oh, you're scared of the claw. Turns out the solution to having a good hollow 3D print is to spend more time on the slicing. So I'm off to do round two. I'm gonna have to go bigger, and this is as big as I can go on that print bed. So it's time to break it up into individual pieces so we can go big. So with a prototype that I knew how I needed to alter now, I tried to break down the 3D file for a larger form of 3D printing, basically so I could print it in parts and go even bigger. And so in our first attempt to hollow it out a little more effectively, we used Blender to try and push the mesh inside or extract it, and it wasn't happening very smoothly. So I turned to virtual reality, where, like molding a piece of clay, I tried to break apart the claw and start to hollow it out from the inside. Now, this was being pretty time consuming, and I wasn't super happy with the results. So what I did instead was ask Puppets War, the guys who, you know, actually co-designed and sculpted the bits with me. Now it turns out the bit that I printed, this prototype, was of the very small bit for the models, whereas we actually have this bust with a much more detailed claw. And the claw is already in a really cool pose, and it's got all this battle damage, and it's really detailed and cool looking. So I sent this really well-drawn sketch over to Puppets War to communicate what I was hoping to achieve, and they took that terrible sketch and made this. Now I had a 3D model of a claw I could do some serious business with. Alright, the claws are still printing, but the glove has printed. It's even bigger already, you can see the knuckle size comparison. So these are hollow, which we want. And the silhouettes line up, so we have the claw. It's a bit rough. But with a bit of cleanup and glue, we might have the beginnings of a ridiculous giant space bear claw. Let's get to work. So I set about starting to remove all the support structures from the filament 3D prints of this insanely cool art project. And the glove part I've divided into three parts so I could print nice and large, two of which were hollowed out top to bottom, which worked really well. But the final one, the knuckles piece, I don't know, I must have had a setting ticked in the slicing software, which meant that the support structure had rafts in layers all the way throughout the internal support structure, which was meant to be hollow. Even though I didn't have enough time to reprint it and that would be a waste of filament, not to worry, there's nothing power tools and elbow grease can't fix. So, this is coming along. This is the real thing, but it's gonna take a bit more work. First things first, we let's get a, a sense for the size. Oh, this is bigger than I expected. I have to put the glove on to put my giant glove on because uh, if you look through there, every time I've put my hand in there without a glove on, I've come out with a few new cuts. It's been brutalized. But with a glove on and with the right finger positioning. Holy. Does that, does that work? That is Oh, so good. Do you know what's going to be yeah. even better? Three of my five claws have finished printing, so we'll be able to get a context for size now. So as we pull away the supports, now you're scared of the claw. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't let go of the joke, okay? This video is the claw. Nothing can stop the claw! Huh. I don't think that was meant to come off. Good one! 
I'll move on to the next one. <laughs> All right, okay, now we're getting <laughs> somewhere. So, I'm gonna print two more claws. While the final two claws are printing, let's just share a few words from our sponsor, Anycubic, makers of awesome 3D printers. Anycubic, makers of the Viper that I've done the filament printing on, have just released a brand new top of the line and super affordable, extreme high resolution resin printer. The Photon Mono X 6K will be available from November 15th. It'll be available from the Anycubic store with an early bird offer of $599 before they ultimately retail for $650. 59 US dollars. With a much improved 5,760 by 3,600 pixels with print resolution up to 34 microns, offering a higher level of detail for 3D models, and additionally it features an industry-leading 350 to 1 black and white contrast screen. With a 9.25 6K LED screen, the Photon Mono X 6K has a significant print volume, 247% larger than the 6.08 inch 3D printers, making it not only higher quality than a lot of its competitors, but enabling you to print more. It has a super fast print speed where you only need one and a half hours to print a 12 millimeter garage kit, saving four and a half hours compared to the Anycubic Photon and one and a half hours over the run of the mill 6.8 inch 3D printers. So go check out the Anycubic Mono X 6K. And if you're early, you could get that awesome discount. Huge thank you to Anycubic for sponsoring the video and making this project possible. This looks astounding, by the way. The level of detail at this tiny size is super impressive. I wonder how impressive it is when it's this big. I'm blue tacking them just so I can see what the whole thing is gonna be like. <laughs> oh yeah, baby! I need to put something in the middle so my hand doesn't bleed every time I put the glove on. Let's go shopping. Now, the local craft shop actually didn't have any felt or anything that I could use to line the inside with. So I had to make do with a nearby other shop to see if something would work. But it turns out that was a blessing in disguise because I found something even better to line the inside of my space bear claw with a bear. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm a monster. But when you think about it, isn't it kind of poetic? Like my space bear claw, is made of real bear, I mean, teddy bear, but isn't that kind of poetic? No, pretty funny though. <laughs> so these are my aerosols, base coat in black, and then I move on to all of these. So I've got all the colors I need to build up the colors on my space bear glove. And I'm very excited to see what, with a base coat, this starts to look like. So I had two different putty primers to pick from. I tried them both on the test print that I did at the prototype claw. And when it dried, I basically took the time to sort of look closely and see which I felt removed the layer lines or might layer onto itself nicely to make it smooth out a little bit. And after picking one, I based my claw and then set about puttying up some of the cracks and some of the minor print flaws. I'd also chipped a few things off here or there or had to fill in some gaps that I accidentally removed when I was removing the supports because I was a little hasty at times. Now getting this thing ready to paint and add color to was pretty finicky. Layer lines can be pretty obvious on filament 3D prints and the way to get rid of those is to slowly build up and then sand back something like this putty primer and then also to manually fill in some of these gaps. I used Milliput for this and custom sculpted some of those filler areas. Slowly but surely it all came together and with one final coat of putty primer, the claw was ready to paint and looked Bloody awesome. What a thing of beauty. It's looking more complete every time I see it. And this is just, I can't put my hand in there. Okay, we're gonna solve this problem now. This is where our poor dear berry friend comes in. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is slather the inside with hot glue, shove my hand in and hope that does what I want it to do. Look at that premium soft lining. We'll glue it more effectively later. But next, it's time to paint this bad boy.
With several coats of black paint covering the claw and fully cured, I moved on to my mini spray paint cans. These, it turns out, were incredible. These are actual vehicle spray paints, so they have metallics all through the paints in the same way that car paints have that sort of shiny metallic look to them. And that was perfect. It gave so much substance to the paint job, at least the initial base layers. And this stuff is made to be durable. And obviously the putty primer is a vehicle sort of undercoat. So these vehicle spray paints just went down like a treat. With the base coats of the silver and the reds down, it was time to move on to the cleanup and then the detailing. The cleanup, I actually just used the miniature paints that I used to paint my tiny space bears. I figure, you know, it's the same color scheme. It's, ju it's just a very, very large version of the same thing when you think about it. I, substantially larger. So I cleaned up all the areas where the silver meets the red and then started layering in my sort of brassy gold color. A really dark, rich brown metallic, sort of as a base coat. And then on top of that, a really warm, regal looking gold that I sort of splotch on to create a, a bit of a textured look, but also nothing too garishly gold. More like a dirty gold. The hilarious thing to me is that this whole painting process of this giant space bear claw is pretty much the same as painting the teeny weeny versions, just to a larger scale. And that became most amusing to me when it comes to the next and final steps of detailing and texturing my space bear claw. It's starting to look done, but there is a step that's going to bring this all together. This next step is my favourite. Streaking grime is a running joke here in the studio. I jokingly comment on everyone's paint job on anything hobby related that a little streaking grime is going to improve it. <laughs> Basically rub mud and grit and dirt all over it and it'll look cooler and grittier, right? The funny thing is, I always finish up my space bear paint jobs with a, a layer of streak and grime that I pull back with white spirits and it falls into the cracks and just looks really gritty and cool. But that's this big. The crazy thing to me is it worked really well this big, like at a huge scale. This is so weird. The final finishing touch came with a delicate dry brush over all the edges with a sharp, bright silver. This created a really cool metallic look. It highlighted some of the wear and tear on the claws in particular, but it was much more subtle around the armor panels and the color around the claw, but it really did make it look like it was layered with paint that was slowly chipping away and just gave a sharpness and a vibrancy that the uh, streaking grime sort of covers up a bit. It really adds a whole new layer of texture and a feeling of it being a substantial material. This project was so cool and so fun and I had this giant detailed hollowed out claw that I'm going to share that with you. That'll be available on my mini factory for a couple of bucks which will be a support to the studio and channel myself and Puppets War and if you happen to have or want to get a filament 3D printer I'm going to pre-slice it up for you or you can slice it yourself so there'll be multiple options and now you can print your own giant space bear claw hollowed out to make something as cool as this. Online. I love it so much. This is the best upgrade I've ever had. Oh, I wonder what I wonder what I could do with this claw. Oh, oh my, oh yes. Oh my God, best back scratch I've ever. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just kidding. It's just plastic claw. I, I'm sorry. This is just this is such a dumb thing, but this is my favorite hidden detail. The little symbol from the butt of the adorable bear that gave its life for this claw lives on. So what are you waiting for? Join the space bears. <laughs> you can now get this and print this. <laughs> it's so freaking fun. And you know what else is fun? Everything we do on this channel. Like this video and subscribe or you'll live to regret it. And hit that notification bell.
And if you make anything cool with all of this stuff or your 3D printers, especially if it's Space Bears related, use hashtag Space Bears on Twitter or YouTube or Instagram so I can check out your Space Bears project and the army of the bears can grow. Thank you so much for watching. Now I can go hurt probably myself. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe!